All right, you can be uh, near you. Yeah. There's your puzzle in a way over there. I gotta fix my dad. Oh, yeah, I gotta turn this. I look horrible. Rougher and... Why don't we turn this up? Why do you always have this dip? I think we'll switch it off. I'm just gonna say, I don't purposely dim it. Uh, I think you do. I don't. I promise you that. Thank you. No, you can think all you want. It's not being used usefully. I'm coming back. Whatever that word is. Getting a beverage. And if I don't give my if I don't give my dog a damn strawberry here in a second, I think he's gonna kill me. I want a beverage as well. Do what? I want a beverage as well. Uh. Would you like a koozie? Yeah, please. We only got two on here. That's poopy. It's been a lot of people begging for the live and I have not done one in a while. Yes. Whoa, we just went to 22. I, yeah, whichever. Oh, okay, I'm looking at the phone. I have the computer here to read comments, so. Uh, let's see, we got Michael Robbins, Kevin Jones, Billy Schmanty. All right. Small Creek Firewood, MW Logging and Sons, Perry Roberts. Nate's on here. Nathaniel, since you called me Peter. Nathaniel. Give me one second, guys. I got to run over and give the dog a strawberry because I think he's going to kill me in my sleep if I don't. <laughs> Fred would never do such a thing. Lauren's puzzling away over there. It's puzzling while I'm puzzling. Chew it. Chew it, because if you choke on it, it's going to be embarrassing on TV. On, on YouTube. This one's mine. It's kind of a lame start to a live there, babe. I know. I didn't plan this out. I, for some reason, I said I want to do it at 830 time is it? 8.35. Um, I'm going to give everybody a chance to get on here. Mm. We only got 28. I got seeds stuck in my tooth. Well, poo. So, um, step out of frame here, man. You don't need to see me digging strawberry seeds out of my teeth. It's actually kind of entertaining. Barry M. Hello from Ontario, Canada. Canada. Jason Nybergall. Hope I said that right. Redbone Mike. Were you just saying Canada? Canada. <laughs> all right, 735 Central Time. I didn't even think about that for all us people over on Central and the West Coast. Um... John LeBras, senior. There she is, hard at work. Hi, Dad. Working on a puzzle. It's a mushroom one. I'm all excited. It's going to go in the office. Me and Fred were, I was sleeping. Fred was fighting the vacuum. And uh, we destroyed the puzzle. We had to put it back together the other day. Well, just the outer rim. But they won't help me work on it now. Gary Duncan from Akron, Ohio. Alrighty, so the state of the timber. It's muddier in hell and you can't do shit. Um, it's been rough. Worked two days this week. I've cut ahead. I have this entire job, except for a couple trees the forester marked across the stream. Uh... That I'm, I'm just upset that he marked. But, uh, and then there's some up by the house. Sorry, I read a comment and it totally threw my mind. Nate said that his brother-in-law, where we found the mushrooms, is cleaning all that land off to farm it. No! So we're going to lose all our mushroom grounds. No! And Nate's going to lose his mushroom ground. He's going to have to find another spot. Uh, holy shit. Kansas Kev. Hey, Pete from Kuwait. Holy shit. What are you doing over there, buddy? Sean Antel, 
What's up from McDonald, PA? I was just out by you today. We were out at, um, I was out at Mark Galici's place with Eddie and the, the uh, ZZ Mark. We were running the sawmill this morning. I'm going to make another video for them guys. Western PA, Bissell Maple Farm. Uh, that's really cool. Fort Myers, Florida Hurricane Cleanup, Wayne Tharp. <laughs> She's all creepy like Wayne. I'm not creepy. Uh, Kansas Kev is doing military deployment. Well, I thank you, sir, so much. I'm, I thank you for what you do, so I have the ability to do what I do. Uh, you, yeah, I don't, I don't think words can express the thanks enough for that. I think we all feel the same way about that. Um, Sorry, I saw something. It's been a while since I've done one of these. My brain is all over the place. Tonight it was boots. I need a new pair of work boots and I wanted to try this other type of work boot and I, you can't find them anywhere. No one carries shit anymore. Um, everything's internet and of course with internet you're four to five days out and I've been looking for a while now and here I am, these boots are killing me. Uh, it's just... Yeah, it's just tough. I don't know. Nate says he's going to put a tracker on my boot and see where I find all them big mushrooms. Well, I'll take you to where you where I find them. But if you go back. No, I'll take you to where I find them if you sell me that cutter for what you bought it for. No, where's my deal on this? <laughs> we'll find more places. Uh, okay, fairness. He did take us to where. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Nate had, so the spot that he showed us was the blacks. They're the smaller, but they're real dark colored um, uh, mushroom. <laughs> Why well, can't I think of the word? Morel. Morel mushroom. My brain is just in the shitter. I got to start taking something for that. Uh, Molson Canadian. Molson Canadian. That's what you're going to take for it. Yeah, Kevin bought me this beer. Skitter Kev bought this beer for me. When they came down, they got it at the Duty Free Shop. That was back in October, so that lets you know how much I drink. Uh, West Somerville. Very good, Wes. We've been, we've been keeping in touch through Dale, too. We've been asking about you, making sure you're doing good. Well, Kansas Kev, I'm glad that you could watch, man. That's pretty cool. Um, I better start talking about something worthwhile on here. So it has been rainy, <laughs> shitty, muddy. I mean, it's this is not a winter to me. I don't know what it, what's going on here. Uh, it's like we get two days of where the ground will just get a crust on top, and then it'll rain, and then it'll snow, and then it'll rain some more. And rain some more and I got put on a job that's I'm not happy about um, long story short they're running the company I'm working for I'm cutting the material faster than they can find it for me to cut in the area that I work um, they're a mill from farther north they had a bunch of jobs down here but I plowed through them very very fast uh, I think I, not fast in, in my aspects, I plowed through them faster than I think they expected for a one-man crew to do. Um, and I had some help with the weather with that and, you know, whatnot. Last fall was not bad. And it's, I think they're just getting to know me and what my capabilities are and as I am with them. And, uh, so... We're in a little bit of a predicament here. Um, real quick, we got Odie Horse. We've got Woodhound. There's Nate Olmstead. So Odie Horse is in here. Roger Gorse from Ridgeway. Smitty. And Gail 
from Peoria, Arizona. So, yeah, it's 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 wild. This is not the right like I'm so the one fellow here from the maple farm. I'm cutting hard maple on this job and the stuff's running like the water's pouring out of it. It's like, you know, I imagine if people got their taps going yet, or if they just wait, I don't know. Yeah, Nate will send me a command. Get the hell out of here. I don't want that thing, dude. It's too much for me. I couldn't afford to run it. I got to approve the deal first. Yeah. I, no, you don't, because I'm not. <laughs> uh it's just weird how this year's going. But anyway, I got put on a job because the time on this job is running out. I don't think anybody else wanted to cut this job. It's all an uphill skid. There's three benches on the hill. It's like a shallow bench, steep spot, shallow bench, steep spot, shallow bench, down into the bottom. And on each bench, there is a seam of red clay. And naturally, the water comes out at the top of the red clay on everyone. So there's water everywhere. Spring seeps everywhere. The timber is garbage. It's just, I didn't have room to move the loader in. If it had been summertime, I'd have, I'd have done it because I could have maybe got in. I was worried about getting it out. It's just a blind bend on a road. And it's just a shit situation. And um, it's tough. I had two days of skidding in there and that's it. I've got a bunch of stuff tore up real bad. Uh, finished one ridge. It's like there's a there's a ridge here, a ridge here, a ridge here. The property's shaped like a piece of pizza in the bottom. There's a stream. And I gotta be careful around that stream because that stream dumps into a reservoir for drinking water. And it's just it's just a bad situation all the way around. Um Yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's tricky. So I had some unexpected stuff happen with equipment. You'll have to stay tuned in the videos to see that and what's going on with that. Uh, it's very frustrating, confusing. I can't figure it out. So I'll let you know about that. And then we've been playing with the chainsaw. So the new thing is I bought the G372. Let's give you some uh, input on what I have on that already. So you saw the videos and my opinions on it. Um, as of lately, and talking to a few other people, uh, I don't think that saw is everything they're telling us it is. Um, the carb in it says Walbro, but I don't think it's Walbro. I think it is just a knockoff. They say Meteor Piston. I don't, I was told that it's not. I don't know if it is or not. Um... It's, 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 uh, it's weird. It's just awful weird. Um, but for out of the box performance, for what I paid for it, it runs. The carb wanders a little bit, but it is very easy to adjust. It's, uh, I got it chooching good. I mean, it's, it's mm -hmm. hog and it cuts really, really good. And I'm really happy on that end of it. How long will it last? I don't know. Don't like the handle, it's junk, and the chain tensioner seems to be boogered up. Now, that could be something I did to it, or I could have just got a bad one. Maybe the screws, the threads are a little boogered or something. I don't know. I took the handle off of that saw, and I had an extra one off of an old saw hanging on the wall that was bent or, like, dinged or something. And um, I put the Husky uh, handle on it because the Husky handle's, you know, bigger around, their handle's small, and it just seems chintzy and shitty, and it doesn't hold up. It doesn't feel right in my hand. The saw feels heavier than a normal Husky. On the box, it says like 17 kilograms, and the Husky X Torx on there, the site says 14.6. That's without a bar. I didn't actually physically weigh it, so I'd be lying if I told you one way or the other. Um, just read a couple comments here. Hi, Albert. Uh, goats firewood. Nothing OEM on them. Uh, 
You have to see, old timer. Watch the videos. It's coming. I don't want to let any cats out of the bag. It's... <laughs> Here Nate says, all the Wong Hong songs I bought seem cheesy and haven't held up very good, but you know who runs them. They're hard on them. That's funny. But, um... I gotta say, I don't know, I don't know if I'm what, I got a hell of a glare here that I'm, I just can't seem to get out of. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if it's, if you're going to take a saw, buy it new, and just build it. You're going to tear it apart, and build it up, put big stuff on it, you know, hop it up. Yeah, go for them, because the guts of the saw are there. If you're going to buy it to just like when I'm throw it out of the box and run it, it's cheap. I don't know how long. I think some people say they'll get one that'll last a long time, and you have other people say they won't last for shit. I think it's kind of a luck of the draw on that end, unfortunately. And then I mean it's when it's running, it's just as good. You know what I mean? It's right there with the husky, uh aside of the weight a little bit, but I don't know if that's because it's the original 372. Not the X-Torque. I know the X-Torque has a lot more plastic shit on it. This has a lot more metal stuff on it. And I don't know if that's part of it or if it's just, you know, theirs is, you know, I don't know. Excuse me, how you on? Um, it's, it's hard to say. I don't know where I'll go with it. I think if you're buying it just to cut firewood, the thing will last you long you know just fine uh, i'm still gonna beat on it i'm gonna start using it this week here hopefully if i can start skidding to hand buck logs it is very hard on fuel spoke to iron horse about this we got some exciting stuff coming on that end too so you know stay tuned f for that i don't want once again don't want to let anything out of the bags here we got some some surprise stuff coming um it's It's hard on fuel, and talking with Iron Horse, Harvey said that they're timed wrong, their timing's all muffed up, so it pours the fuel to it. I don't know enough about them to tell you what, you know, it's whatever. And as I got it dialed in, I noticed the fuel consumption went down, obviously, because I wasn't it wasn't just pouring the fuel to them. Um, but it's, it is doing better. It oils like a son of a bitch, which is not a bad thing. Um, I was almost going through oil tank for tank of fuel, which is quick. Uh, but other than that, like I said, I don't have real complaints about it. I mean, it seems good. Runs runs out good. Just longevity. We got to see longevity, and that's going to take time. I figured I'd give you my honest opinion. Will I buy another one? I don't know. I do not know. I do not know. I'm still having trouble with the current Husky I'm running. And I'll have a video coming out on a hand cutting video. I think that'll be next Sunday. That one will pop up. It should be. It, and you'll see in the video, it, on the low side, it wanders. It just does that. Yeah, yeah, I just can't get it to stop. Fred, what are you? Someone's not feeling loved tonight because we went on the search for boots and he didn't get to go. So he can stare at the computer screen for a while. He doesn't look real thrilled about it, though. Oh, dude. <laughs> you got him. Right in my ears. Little turd. So, um, let's see. What else do we have happening? So, we do have exciting stuff coming on the Iron Horse end. Uh, and Wade Marsh. I don't know if anybody knows him. He's a, he's been God sub to me for a long time. Uh, we got some news coming on that end dealing with saws. Just spoke to him tonight about it. Fred's like, it's not that exciting now that I'm up here. No, you're not getting out of here, too. No. No. I like having a little dog you can just huck around. Not that I huck him around, but... We kind of huck him around. He's he's durable. You bounce. All right. So, yeah, that's where we're at there. And I just want to get this job done, the one I'm on, and just get the hell out of there. I really do. 
Um, Forrester got trees by the house marked. It's a bunch of poplar. It's standing pretty straight. Uh, some of it I can get. Some I think I'm going to have to leave. I just can't take those risks anymore. Um, it's no offense to him. I feel bad because they make promises to the landowner that I can't keep. And that, that shouldn't be put on my shoulders. And I feel like me as the logger, or us as a logger, if you're, you cut timber, and if you have our force, you've been in this situation, I'm sure. It doesn't matter which way you go, you're the bad guy. You know, you go and you cut something that we'll say on the edge, just on the edge of your comfort or, you, you know, the, you know, a bad spot or something you think, nah, you know, that's kind of shouldn't really, whatever, you know, by right, you shouldn't do that. Um, it, if you go and cut it, like say you're too close to a stream and you tear something up next to a stream and then, oh, well, you know, he's just a bad logger, blah, 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 blah. You get the bad rep that way. Or if you leave the tree, you know, don't do that. I ain't cutting that. Too much risk, too much blah, blah, blah. Ah, he's no good logger. He doesn't do what he's supposed to do, and you get a bad rap that way. So it's kind of freaking sucks, man. So I'm caught in a situation like that right now, and I don't really know what to do. So, I mean, I know what to do. I'm just, I don't know what to do about it. So um, the house thing's getting old because, you know, one slip up, lose a tree, I cut somebody's house in half and I lose my business and somebody has a hole in their house. Or if I don't cut the tree and then the forester looks bad to the landowner who's going to badmouth me and the forester, it just, uh, what do you do? I can't pull my hair out because I ain't got nothing left. Got a little bit. Cricket, I buddy from West Virginia. Goats, firewood, and farms was known. Do you know anyone that climbs? I climb. But here's the thing. The type of insurance I carry doesn't cover that shit. And I stopped climbing because I'd rather stand at the bottom and run the hell away from them. I don't mind climbing here and there on trees that are in comfort zones. I like climbing pine trees because they're all straight up and stuff. Just for fun with my buddies, but I'm working under my buddy. I'm helping a friend of mine. I'm working for him under his insurance. I don't, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't know how to put it. The, the days of hot dogging it or hot rodding it. It's, I can't do that stuff no more. I got too much to lose. Uh, so. It's uh, Ruger Farming from Northeast Missouri. What's up, buddy? You guys got good deer hunting out there. Mark. Mark's on here. We seen the boys earlier. Today we was out there. Man, we sawed some cherry logs. I could have swore would have been garbage. We opened them up, and they were turned out to be some pretty pretty stuff. So got a, I'm working on a cool video for him. When I get done with this live tonight, I'm going to go and uh, start editing all that. We're going to put a nice video together for... Mark Sawmill, we're going to try to find a nice song, put it together. I got a bunch of cool shots, and I think I can really make some, make a nice video to say a thank you. Um, Mark did a couple shout outs, sent some people over to my channel, and got a lot of views on a couple of the uh, videos I did do. And it just, I can't thank them guys enough. So I want to do this as like, hey, check this out kind of thing. So, um, Oh, Ruger Farming says, hook us up on a deer hunt. I have to do that, buddy. You have to email me some information. I don't know if anybody got the info. I don't know if I have info. I need to get a sticker. It just has my... You got it somewhere. I just don't know where it went. Either way, it's fox, F-O-X dot T-R-A-P at live dot com. Always looking for deer hunting options. And hunting is fast becoming a rich man's sport. And meeting new people. Yes, awesome. meeting new people. Um, hey, freaking Jeep's on here. What's up, buddy? We're getting all the big names on here tonight. So, Jonathan, what's up from California? My cousin, Jonathan? Fusara. What? I it's know. Fusara. I my see. Family's names. I see the beard, the mustache. I see the mustache in his little picture what with the horse. What's he called you? Uh, <laughs> the Candy Crush Pete's, King. 
Lauren's Candy Crush King. And there's a funny story behind that. So, um, we were packing, were we packing mine out? Your oak. Yeah, so we were packing my elk out. And uh, we stopped just to take a breather. And um, they, Lauren, her dad, and her cousin were all talking about something. And uh, I just pulled out the phone and I said, ah, get a, you know, a quick game of Candy Crush in, kill it. And it's a good way to focus your mind on something else for a minute, let you catch your breath. And he looks over and I can't say exactly what he said. He's like, are you playing Candy Crush? <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, just, you know, I'm crushing a few candies. <laughs> Lauren was howling. Oh, it was funny. So, oh, man. But, uh, Cody Nielsen, 250 acres in Southeast Missouri. You're more than welcome to hunt. There's another one. Like I said, email me, buddy. We'll put something together. Tina Fitzwater. Remember I tell you about Tina? Tina's yes. lady used to yep. make the cookies. <laughs> How the hell are you? Haven't heard from you guys. I was funny. I was thinking about you the other day. And I just did my West Virginia recertification online. It was a lot easier than going. But I was thinking, man, I almost ought to go to the Elizabeth Wirt one and do it just so I can come over to see you guys. But I hope Dan and everybody's doing good. I'm sure you're fighting the mud just as much. Nate, back off. What the Missouri wall, not you just back off. <laughs> yeah, just because you are now with somebody that hunts doesn't mean you can steal that too, Nate. Right? No, he wants the walnut. Oh, I thought he was trying to sneak in on hunting. Ruger spots. Farming, here he is. He goes, I am just south of the famous just south of the famous Mark Twain of Hannibal. It weird I grew up around and don't care about Mark Twain stuff. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say Mark Twain. Okay, so Mike Hauser wants to know why my YouTube name is Nuts319. This has been asked a lot of times. So, the quick quick thing on it is um, it when I it. worked as a carpenter, been in the union back in the days, um, one of the guys, for whatever re reason, had a nickname. My name's Pete. I don't know. He started calling me Peanuts for some reason. And then from Peanuts, it went to just straight nuts. And I thought, well, that's what I'm going to write on all my tools because nobody wants, like, tool no one's going to take a tool with names engraved all over it of a male appendage because, you know, it just, the whole stigma with construction workers, whatever. No one wants that. So I was nicknamed nuts. That and because I'm crazy because I climbed the trees and did all this stuff. And he said, dude, you're nuts. So that's how I got that. The 319 was just when I... Did it you had to pick numbers for whatever reason youtube wanted to, you to do that and um i picked 319 because i thought it was an arbitrary number but here subliminally i think it was because it was my best friend's birthday but i don't know you know i just picked 319 and my buddy's like you know that's my birthday i was like yeah hmm. but i guess but it you is. probably didn't because you don't remember birthdays smitty's got 150 acres on steep ass mountain in west virginia Really nice deer. Email me, buddy. Go back and find an email address. I'd love to. I've been looking for property in West Virginia. I've been looking for property, period. I need some land to park some iron. Maybe build a garage someday. It's not him saying he's trying to steal your land. No. No, no, no. I gotta find a piece of land. William Klein, Mark. Mark, are you still on here? I would get in touch with him about that, William. Okay, hold on. I'm messing stuff. Okay. Let me read. I'm going to read a couple comments. We got Tina Fitzwater doing good. Dan hasn't worked for about a week. Too much mud. Dave, Dan's partner, was in the... Uh, was in the... Uh, Honest and Elizabeth should have come here. I miss you guys. We didn't see you at Bunyan last year. John Chapin's on here. Hi, John. How you doing, buddy? Jason Abergall. Do he, Jason Abergall wants to know if I do I like to go gator hunting? I never have. I thought of it and I looked it up on. Actually, I searched that, remember, right around Christmas? Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how expensive it was to hunt a gator. I'd have no desire to get, like, a full gator mounted. I would like just the head, you know, and they open the head and they, like, dry it or freeze dry it. I don't know what the hell they do with it. I'd love to do that. I would like to get a gator. 
It'd be nice to do something like that this time of year when it's just shitty up here. But yeah, I'd love to. I'd like to shoot one. Um, shoot you know, when you see them swimming and you shoot them, but I noticed that you guys do like the hook and stuff with the chicken. I don't know how anybody does, but yeah, I'd love to do that sometime. Um, Tom Davis. Mark Galici. Okay, so hold on. William Klein and Mark Galici, you two need to get in touch with each other somehow. William, you can email me. You have my emails above there if you want to get in touch with him. Because we just talked about that today. We can, you know, if you email me, I can get his info to you somehow that way. But get back to the email. Um, John Chapin wants to know, do you have got any dust our way? There's no dust, John. <laughs> I assure you, no dust. Um, Mike Hauser wants to know, do you see the hardwood market crashing like the softwood market is? Well, here it is crashed. The only thing keeping the hardwood market going, it had crashed a while ago and it was hurting. I mean, people were, you know, cherry and red oak, it's when you're selling logs right now, I don't know about the hardwood lumber market, but when you're selling the logs, they just, they didn't want them. You know, it was a very, the veneer market's in the shit for both of those. Um, it was very poor. Poplar was really hot over the summer and it has come back down. I don't know about hard maple. I know white oak was doing decent. It's still doing okay because of the barrel staves, you know, all the whiskey barrels. That's real hot rate like this in our generation. Um, walnut dropped way off. It's not near as high as it was. It was getting out of hand there for a while. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is left. Soft maple was high and it has since dropped. It was to, for a while there, nobody could get any orders for the soft maple, you know, to get it moved out. Um, blocking's doing okay still. What's driving our market now is no one can get a damn stick of wood to the mill. I know as of Thursday morning, early Thursday morning, I'm cutting for three mills. So the company I cut for owns three separate mills, has a hand and a fourth, but I know three of them are theirs and they were all empty except for the one was an Amish mill who had a bunch of hemlock logs, but there's no orders for hemlock softwood. Um, so, I mean, what that, what's that tell you? I don't, but it's, I mean, they were completely, when I say no logs, they had nothing, nothing to saw, not a stick on the yard. Um, I got two loads hauled on Friday. I wasn't able to skid, but I was able to pile stuff up or I mean, not pile stuff up, just cut stuff down. I finished cutting out the entire job. So yeah, uh, with this weather, I see the market just kind of main and steady in, and it's going to, people are going to start getting hungry for material because they can't meet orders. So hopefully it'll bring some stuff up. Tom Davis is a forester and tries not to mark trees that are in danger. Tom, that is greatly appreciated, man. Come mark my trees. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Weisberger, Trump County, Wisconsin logger here. What's up, buddy? Uh, Jonas Weisberger, not in my area. What the hell's going on here? Whoa. What happened? If you head to Missouri, they got them big paddlefish. I think the season's now. So it's coming up soon. White oak is on fire. Okay, so it's... Wow, mud. Our soft maple went to hell. We were cutting a lot of poplar. And mm -hmm. softwood pulp, red oak is down, white oak went down here some. That's from John Chaffin. So you're getting it from Nate's, his area is like Northeast Ohio. John Chaffin's like Central West Virginia. I'm like right in the middle. So you're kind of getting a broad spectrum. It is very, sometimes it's localized. It's all in who has what orders. Jason Duchette, stay tuned. You'll see about that, Jason. Uh, I don't want to leave you hanging, but I can't let all my all the 
hot stuff out. Yeah, I can't imagine anybody is, but there's no frost here, and I don't think we're going to. Lauren has a cousin in Missouri who got an elk on Game Cam Ruger Farming. I have a, oh, my cousin. Uh, yeah, Ronnie. James Banton. I just come in a little late, I guess. I did a whole thing about this, but I like it, but there's some things I don't like. If you go back and check out the earlier part of this and you'll get the gist of it. Um, that's awesome, Jason. That'd be cool someday. Someday I'll get hopefully get to do that. I think Little Southern Brothers. Hey, what's up, guys? There you are. I missed you. I don't even know how you missed you. And if I missed your comment, I apologize. Just throw another one in there, and I'll uh, I'll get to you here in a minute. Check it out, Rufar and John Marcini. They had a selective draw, like five tags or something. Holy moly! Is that deer behind you sniffing Fred's fog? Well, more than likely he is, because Fred fogs with the best of them. John Chapin, you're being a butthead. What do you do? He said, tell Peter he's blinding me, light reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sassafras Valley, what's up, buddy? Um, let me see, what I covered, okay. So we did the wood, we did that. There's a couple things I can't talk about. Now, I don't know if I did talk about this, and I didn't video any of it, because sometimes some things are better just left. Not videoed. Not videoed, you know. Whether it's I'm too in the moment, or I just want to keep those memories for myself, or whatever. But we did go on a hunting trip this year. We went to, I don't know if I really talked about this too they much. You can see them on my YouTube. Yeah, she has some of them on, her, on Lauren's YouTube. I don't even know what mine's called. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho... Uh, we'll get back to you on that. And then, um, awesome, uh, Lauren LeBros 5189. I don't even know where that is. There it is. Lauren, Lauren LeBros 5189. So jump over there. She's a couple videos. Her first video with her buck she ever shot with a bow. Um, I say, don't skimp me. I've shot more. No, she's shot plenty. <laughs> um, and there was... My dad's elk. Your dad's elk. I think you got some Fred videos on there. We need to start putting more Fred videos on there. You try videoing Yeah, he always does the dumbest shit when you're not looking or paying attention. So, But anyways, I'll give you a long story short. I'll try to do it short. If anybody's interested in hunting stories... Ah, uh, saw a surgeon. What's up, buddy? Stan, Joseph Weigenberger, rough. No. Hello, Ted. Uh, we need help with comments. We hunt some of the best ground here in Michigan 39. You're welcome here. Holy crap, Nate. That's cool. Okay. Back to it. Got focus. Focus, Pete. Um, we were talking about the hunt. We went on this hunting trip, and my goal was I always wanted to kill a mule deer. You guys know back a, a while back, I went to Nebraska with Steve Villa. We went out there. We got him one. Okay. I didn't have an opportunity. The weather was bad. It got real hot. Whatever. So I said I'd love to go to Colorado. And Lauren knew somebody that she worked with that lived in Colorado that kind of knew the run, like what you need to do to apply and where we can go. Kind of pointed us in the right direction, you know, like, hey. Head that way kind of thing. You know what I mean? So we got, we, me and her both drew tags. And then Lauren's father and her dad's best friend both drew tags. So all four of us went out. We stayed at like an Airbnb. And uh, we started our hunt for mule deer. So the first day, no one shot anything the first day. It was the second day we tied into them, huh? Mm -hmm. So on the second day, me and Lauren both shot ours. And it was in the evening, too. You shot yours in the afternoon. I shot mine in Pete late afternoon. He shot his, and my dad was on the phone with his friend, and Kenny was right near you. He heard me and Kenny just split. Kenny heard you, and I started crying, and then, like, not long after, I shot mine. Like, you, less did than you, an hour did after. Did you take a pop shot at one before that? Yep. Yeah, she, <laughs> she shot before that, and then me and Kenny split. Um, he was hunting with a bow which a recurve dude's incredible whatever um 
But he had spied a buck earlier that day, and it went up into a spot that we were only allowed to hunt in on a Sunday because that's when this area, it's public ground, but there's a section of it you're not allowed in. Well, it's not productive. It's like municipal ground. Mm -hmm. You can't go into one section of it because no one's in there working on Sunday. So then you're allowed to be in there. You know, the rules are you can't be in there unless they're not. And so this deer went over there. That's the rules that they gave it. Yeah. Well, there was a deer on the other side of it, and I wanted to cross through it to get to that deer or setting a game plan is. Long story short, I came over a knoll and ran into the one that I got. Like, didn't never knew it was there. 50 yards, jumped up, ran, I shot it, done. Like, you know, and then right after Lauren shot hers. So, um, Tina, are you asking me? I'll get to that in a minute. And then, so we both get our mule deer. And then the next day, your dad shot his, right? No, the next day, dad and Kenny went out on their own. We went to go get your elk tag. Dad saw a seven point and didn't realize it was a nice seven point till it was running away. And then the next day, after so that. So Tuesday's when I shot my elk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I shot. I got, I was like, I'm going to buy an elk tag. I'm here. You know, you can buy it over the counter. I bought an elk tag. We ran around and did some stuff. I found some old elk sign. I ended up finding elk like five miles away on the other side of the 70 in a whole different unit. And me and uh, one, her dad's best friend, got in a truck, drove back to the place. I dropped him off and I took her off up the BLM road, a road I should not have been up. Nope. Packed down in like three and a half miles because I took the long way around and I shot an elk and I couldn't believe it. So, and then... Took me, I shot that at 3.05. I didn't get back to the place until 7.30. No, it was way later when you got back. Like 8 o'clock. Yeah, 8 or 9. And then Jonathan showed up at 10. Yeah, I was packing the animal out. I had one whole hind quarter on my back. Packing out in the dark. Somewhere I've never been before. Mountain lions were by me because we found that out the next day. They were following me as I was coming out. I'm glad I didn't know about that till after. The well, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then not that i'm really worried about a mountain lion but um yeah so it was pretty dude i can tell a story for hour, hours and hours and hours we'll show you real quick some of the stuff we got i don't the i shot a buck in, My little guy's in the basket in the okay basket. i shot a buck in um archery season up at our camp nothing huge decent one and then lauren shot this one at camp she popped that one on the run on a drive out of a laurel thicket on the last day. It was a real nice buck. And then where did her, her mule deer, yeah, it's my BB gun for shooting at squirrels. It's just a plastic BB gun. She said after she missed, she said, I'm shooting the first one I see. So she shot that one. She said, I went on too many hunts and not come home with something. She says, I need to shoot something. What? Too many big game hunts. And just, she says, I don't end up getting something. So I said, the hell with it. I need to kill something. So, now I'll go in the back room and just grab the other two. He's showing off, guys. He shows you the little ones first, and now he's going to show you his big ones and make me look bad. Think about what <laughs> I said what I meant, and I meant what I said. <laughs> so, here's the elk. It's not that big, but it is damn big for me. Um, four by, they had to be four by four to shoot. That was the one I found. Her dad killed a bigger one than me a couple days later, and uh, I couldn't be happier about how that went, too. But, yeah, so there's mine. Fred wants to, always wants to sniff the, the skull. He's got issues. He's a little Jeffrey Dahmer puppy. And this was my mule deer. I'm tickled with this. I didn't realize how big it was. I didn't, you know, I didn't know. That's brow times. You're not supposed to. I thought it was a 5x5, five five, but they say, no, you don't count those. You only count the sides. So, the heck with them. I call it a 5x5. Five but this one's going to go on the wall. I'm not getting the elk mounted. Here, I'm... show this picture. That's the one of Dad. Well, get up and show it. I'm going to put this away real quick. That was my dad's elk. So that was cool. Yeah. I got to watch my old man's dream come true. He had some bad health the last couple of years. And uh, he was able to actually climb some mountains, which was pretty cool. My old man's a tank. So, um, yeah, it was pretty impressive. I mean, you took four Easterners. 
out to the mountains of Colorado and you know, we felt lucky just to get the mule deer and then we turned around and shot not one elk, but two elk. We were told we got lucky, but I feel like we put we in hunt, We hunted work. hard. I mean, I walked 10 miles a day, 11 miles a day. I forget how many miles a day I walked the day I shot mine and ran out of water. <laughs> it was a rough day. So, MSL's out of here. I missed him. Shit. He was in and gone. So... Okay, I think Dan was asking, no, nope, I think she was asking somebody else. Tina Fitzwater was asking how work goes. Work is tough, it's mud. I'm not talking about it much, so what's that tell you? Um, oh, and I have to say that her cousin showed up and if had he not shown up, would life, would, we, yeah, <laughs> life would have been a lot harder. So I'm just thankful that that man showed up and helped. <laughs> and he was fun to hang out. Yes, he's an awesome dude. Hopefully he can make it. We're going to try to go again here soon. Hopefully he can make it on the next one and actually hunt. He just came as like a pack mule. He does that stuff. It's fun. <laughs> he's nuts. Uh... What is he doing? Making hey. his paws. Stop licking your paws. I'll lick your paws. Okay, He's okay, gross. okay, okay. He's so gross. We have down here an Australian, Australian pine, yellow pine, oak palm tree, and bing in trees. Bing in trees. A cannon. All right, you have sold Olmstead. Zuki 4x4 said he killed a lot of time. How you been, buddy? I'll never forget you. He put down an awesome bid in that auction the one year, which we're going to do again. It's just the we time wasn't right. It. We just haven't. It, the it. time hasn't been right. That's all. Um. <laughs> Let me see, Billington. Everybody's kind of having their own conversation over here. Well, that's good, though. Clayton Coble, what's up? Cut for Columbia. Whoop. Ruger Farming. I would love to get old school on there. The man of no words. Someday we're going to meet up. He cuts on the eastern side of the state over towards, um, I think he's over towards uh, like Scranton, Harrisburg area out that way. He cuts some nice timber too. Uh, MW is going to try to do some skid tomorrow. All right, buddy, you take care. I think we've covered just about everything. What else do we have new in our lives? Mud. Did I say mud? Oh, yeah, mud. Ha-ha. Mm. Hardy, har, har. I don't know. I'm looking for land. That's new in my life. I'm looking for, like, 20 acres to whatever I can afford. What did you bring? Um, we've written, nah. nah. That's ours. Um, James Bant wants to know how the tiger gets run, and I honestly couldn't tell you because I haven't ran it in over a year. Uh, I just have not had a job to be able to put it on. Either the timber's too big or the ground is too unflat. 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 Um, Michael Robbins wants to go hella logging. I'd like to, yeah, it'd be cool to see that up close. What is that? Hella logging. Hella logging. Ruger Farm wants to know how the... It's when they cut the trees and they pull them out with a helicopter. Oh, okay. Yeah. The dozer's holding up good. Um, got that roller fixed on it. Knock on wood, it seems to be holding holding good. I don't want to eat my words, so I need to shut up. But John, that'd be awesome, buddy. 
That'd be awesome. Which John? Chafin. The say? only John, I'll tell you. My dad's the other John. And there's another John. We have a lot of we John call We call your dad the boss LeBros. No, he's John LeBros, the molecule boss. <laughs> he's a chimney guy. Yeah, you if anybody it? on here has chimney questions, her dad. Maybe not. I don't know one. if he wants to answer is chimney questions all day. <laughs> so, oh, we got the uh, gun clubs putting on a fishing tournament oh, this yeah. year. But uh, if you guys want to get involved in that in a way, it's a tagged fish tournament. I will, in a future video, I'll put something in there how you guys, I don't know, I feel bad asking for help. I just kind of want to see how it's, there needs to be a lot of, it needs help. <laughs> That's all well, I can say. we don't know if it needs help yet. We're in the beginning stages of yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to need help. Be positive. Nancy. Michael Robin says, "No, not hog hunting from the helicopter. Now that's that my speed. Fun. That is my speed. I'd love to do. That's pricey. We looked into that. Pork choppers is one. Mm -hmm. It's like four grand for like four hours, but I think it went up even more. Heck, hunting for a hog out of a helicopter, we couldn't find anybody to hunt yeah. for a hog from the ground. We've been looking to go on a hog hunt from the ground." We were going like, to do that this year. And the year. only ones we could find in Texas were all at night. I didn't want to do it night stuff. And not we're, that it's not fun. We were looking for some stuff, to, something to just break up this time of nothing from, you know, 1st of January until March when shit don't happen around here except cut trees and rain. And uh, Sassafras, we'll see you, buddy. Um... And then I looked into, I always wanted to kill a fallow deer, and I'm not going to be able to make it. I don't think it's just out of my realm to make it to where they naturally live. So, obviously, you're probably going to have to hunt them on, like, a ranch of some style. And then, you know, like a high fence thing. And I don't really necessarily want to do it in Pennsylvania. I'd like to go do it in Texas, where the ranch is so damn big. The animals naturally live. They just don't leave the ranch. But, holy crap, that's, once again, rich man sport. I... It's, it's tough. It's tough. Because if I go on one of these things, I don't want to go just... Obviously, I want Lauren to go and shoot something, too. And we just don't know how we want to do it. It's just... For what it costs, I'd rather spend that money and go on, like, an elk hunt in Montana or costs, Wyoming. We might as well pay the ticket to go to another country where they are active. Yeah. I mean, it's... Crazy. Pork choppers. That's what they call them. There's, there's, hella bacon's another one. They call it hella bacon. <laughs> that was a good one. I've always, that's cool. I'd love to do it, but I'd make them land so I can pick a pig or two up. Uh, Tina's got two bears that need gone. Tina, you say oh, that. A bear. So this was funny. We went hunting in West Virginia this year, and um, I felt. Everything I got this year was before West Virginia season, so I was like, I don't need to kill another deer. You know, we had, was full. I had a, a white tail, two mule deer, a, an elk, and then she ended up shooting another deer. So it was like, we're, we're good. You know what I mean? So I let a, a real nice, probably 16, 17 inch eight point go. I think that was on the first day. Saw some other smaller bucks, nothing. But when, you know, the property, we put, corn and apples in the middle of the property to keep the deer there and we go like a week before and put that stuff down and you know then we hunt like the outskirts of the property and uh we came back we had a trail camera to see what was coming to it and we went there and everything was gone like wiped clean there wasn't nothing and then there was a mineral block that was there and the mineral block was rolled way over the hill and i was like i don't think deer do that whatever and i thought it was weird because the stuff we put out would never all be gone so we put some more stuff out, you know, and um, then we got to talking to the neighbor. They're like, man, we saw a bear three times in a row. We didn't have the trail camera. It wasn't working this year. And you figures the only year it didn't work. They said it was a monster. And I didn't realize you could hunt bears this year throughout deer season, but I didn't know all the regulations. And I don't know if we had to buy a tag ahead of time or how all that worked, but it was a big bear. He said, biggest he'd ever seen. They think it was pushing three, 400 pounds. And here, 
that just raided everybody's, you know, deer piles and cleaned house and was just moving from property to property, cleaning everybody out. My brother, my brother, my cousin's got a bunch of trash bears in California. Yeah, we place. talked about going there and hunting them. Mm -hmm. I did hunt them once, just didn't come home with the one I shot at. Heli Hunter is another one that Cricket gave us up. Um, Jeff Daniels off grid. Land, in, land probably not in California, huh? 200 plus acres. <laughs> That'd be cool, but that's a little too far. You'd be close to Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not trying to move to California. Uh, so, I don't think we got anything new beyond what I've spoke about. Everyone's been asking to do a live, and I finally got to get in one, and I think I'm covered. Um, I bought that, I got some of that wood off of Mark, some pine log, and we sawed it and turned it into, uh, trailer sides. Looks really nice. And... He saw the aspen log, which I think my plan some days to turn into new drawers for the kitchen cabinets. Ooh. Someday. It's got to dry. Yeah, just call you it all that. Y'all noticed that when I went, ooh, he went, someday. I want to put, <laughs> I want to put new doors and drawer fronts on the kitchen. The, the cabinets are awesome. They're beautifully handmade cabinets, but the doors are like chintzy plywood rabbited. And everything else is solid maple, and then they just shit on the doors. I, that was the era. They're still nice, but I'd like it to be better. Holy crap. No of a place in Stonewall, Colorado that is 49,000 acre ranch. It's getting logged. There's plenty of elk, I bet so. There's a bear hibernating under someone's deck over in Pike County. PA. Wake him up. Uh, Don't do that. That's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Robbins said, Alaska kid. 1,200 pound bear is a bear. Them little black bears look like cubs. Michael, you're right, buddy, but you know what? I've seen a lot of the things. That, I've been to Alaska three times fishing, four times maybe. I can't even remember. I was a little kid when I first started going. Um, we fished the Kenai area a lot, uh, like Sadatna. Went out into the Ketchikan, Crescent Lake, all over the place we fished. Um, and seen some big bears. And talked about hunting bears out there. First of all, it's, it's expensive. And second of all, everyone I talk to says they all taste like shit. Because the time of year you're hunting them, they're eating nothing but guts. And that's what their fat's getting made out of. And salmon guts. And it's just, a lot of the guys shoot them. And you get the hide and the meat. And it's, to me, bear isn't high on my list. Um, if the opportunity presents itself, I would shoot one. And black bears back here, we get, Big one. they've shot them up to 800 pounds in Pennsylvania. They've killed some huge black bears in PA. Um, but it just, bears was never a big thing, you know, maybe it will be for me someday, but right now it's not. Shine, shine, shine. Hey, Mike Morgan's in here. How you doing, Mike? How's the fire starter business? I haven't been over to see that. Stop over to see that. And your cabin looks nice too, man. I'm happy for you guys. Looks real nice. Um, give me a call sometime. I have to get together. I have some sawmill questions for you. Um, whenever you get a chance. No rush. Uh, da, 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 da. And the fire starters is booming. Mark and... Um, Mark Galician, we were talking about, he's like, do you see that fire starters? He sells so many of them. And I was like, yeah, he does good on them. Um, are you able to do much up there, Mike, with all this mud and, and crud and, uh, uh, I think my next job's up north of you a little bit. I'll be working right around Zelianople. So we'll be by you again. Outside with Shy. What's up, buddy? 
small creek firewood. He's been in the whole time. So I think we've about got it all covered. Fred's Fred's protesting next to the so that's the vent for where the wood stove comes up. It's a cold air return that the heat just comes up through. And uh I can hear my dad right now going, Hi Freddy. He just lays there and farts and does dog stuff. So something he's good at. Yeah, I'm really banking that we get some cold this week and it freezes and I can just get this job on. I'm done. Oh, oh my. I don't even want to get off this job so bad. Jazzy said, tell Pete and Lauren, me love them. Love you, Jazzy. <laughs> That's funny. Ah. We had... What was the stone I got? You'll see it in this next video tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning's video, how about that? Tomorrow morning's video, I think you guys will like. It's one where I took multiple days videos. I chopped them all up into little, all the good bits and pieces, all that nice stuff. And we put it to some music and um, a lot of it's hand cut and a lot of it's helmet view. So I think you guys will like it. It's a nice tr change. I haven't done any of those in a while. It's been hard to video lately. I've just been in rough mood. This weather, just no sun and ugh. so. They always say we. Is there more than one person in there? Where? When you say we put it to some nice music, and I always just think that. Well, your input's always on it. Well. I always ask you, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Don't give me credit. Credit's not due. <laughs> I don't remember you said that. I mean, in this situation. Ah. Hold up. I just noticed you always say wait, and I was wondering if there's if there's something in here that I didn't know about. She's hard at it there. You I'm see doing this it. Puzzle. Puzzles give me anxiety. He enjoys it. He doesn't want to do it right now, but the minute he gets doing it, he gets into it. Now you just Fred can't wait till you're done and you put it back on the floor and he just does the Cajun two step on it and destroys it. I'll have you help me with this puzzle in no time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, May checks in the house. You're coming in just at the end there, bud. Way to be late, Jay. Mm. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Billy Schmanty just subscribed subscribe, subscribe to your channel. I can't talk. I'm surprised you could find me. My name's spelled funny. So, Marcy's in here. Marcy had talked about some of the stuff we were doing. Put it on a cracker, dude. Yeah, Cricket knows what it's all about. Put that on a cracker, dude. I love, I watched that guy. Um, we have the seasonings. Oh, what is his name? I'll go get his seasoning. I can't think of the YouTube handle. I'm sure he's got like a million subs. Eh? <laughs> he makes some cool stuff. I got his. Cajun two step. Isn't that him? No, bring it over here. Stale cracker. Much love, stale cracker. I don't know. Jason just got done doing axe throwing. Uh, stale cracker, that's what it is. This stuff here. Put that on a cracker, dude. It's good. You should try it. They have like a plane and they have the fire. That's money, dude. Yeah. I hope I don't get like copyright infringement for doing that. Okay. Maybe he'll see it and he'll like, like, hey, come down. We'll do like a crawfish boil or something. I've always wanted to try that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've seen you find crawfish and go, I ain't eating. Well, my fear of eating crawfish around here is like, we have too many heavy metals that were in the ground from back in the steel mill days and, you know. Plus, the crawfish around here were a bit intimidating. Yeah, we found in this little stream next to my buddy's camp in Erie, I swear it was a small lobster. It was big. It almost took my finger off. It was close. He's, he's being a bit dramatic, but yeah, no, we'll go with that. No, I'm not. <laughs> Frickin' Jeep mm. says, I, I see a piece that goes there. Oh, God. Where? <laughs> Ruger Farming wants to know if we do shed hunting. Yes, we do. We do shed looking. So on the, the box. Oh, shit. <laughs> so the big part of when we were in Colorado, this light's not going to come on because it sucks. But, um... We were walking around 
and I was up on a hill looking for mule deer, and Lauren comes up over the hill, and she's like, hey, I found one. She found this big mule deer shed, like a big shed. And then her cousin found this one the day we were packing her dad's elk out. That was a nice one. And then uh, this big nine point was the one I dropped the sassafras tree through. I have a video of that. It's way back. This was one I found on a property I was cutting this fall. That's a property I grew up hunting. I was cutting the property this fall. Fred's licking the antlers. And then now this box of deadheads and things are all ones that we found. A lot of the deadheads came off of a piece of property. There's a big one from Ohio. Some of these are from, the sheds are from a property I marked that had some of the most beautiful timber on it I've ever seen in my life. And I can't, what do you see? Like the house shape. Somebody closed the door downstairs. We'll go. Right now. Go check it out. So, um, you know that kind of stuff. But so I just wanted to go through and show you that I forgot all about that. We found a bunch, and we found like a small elk shed, and Dad's buddy found. He had pockets full. He was pulling sheds out every day. No, Michael, we're not. <laughs> Lost. Ah, man. But okay, so I think we're... Got all the comments caught up. Um... Yeah, I think we're good. I just, I can't think of anything else that we're missing. Uh, markets are markets. The G372 is okay. I'm still up in the air whether it was worth it or not. Uh, got some big things coming with Iron Horse. Big things coming with Marshy on here. Um, don't want to give it up. But I just, it's got to do with chainsaws. And then... Um, Got some surprises in the equipment end. That'll show up in the video soon. I think that's it. So, once again, everybody, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being part of this channel. Couldn't do it without you. I love all of you. I love all your positive comments. And, uh, you know, I don't make a whole lot of anything on YouTube. But I will say I've made a lot of friends and they're worth any more, much more than any money any amount of money. And I know that sounds like cliche or whatever, but honestly, I've met some of the coolest people. Ended up meeting her because of YouTube. Because of YouTube. Because I met Dale through YouTube, became friends with Dale. Dale was great friends with her father and their family when they all lived in Rhode Island. And then that's how our paths crossed. So, I mean, it's just weird. I owe a lot to YouTube and the people that I've met on it. So I just want to say extended thank you so much. Um, keep an eye out for tomorrow's video tomorrow morning. It's going to be a pretty cool one. And then we're going to do another one that should show up Wednesday. That'll be a Mark's mill, Mark Galici and them guys, big thanks to them. And thanks again for everybody that jumped on here, left the likes in the comments. It's you're too nice. And, um, nice is a good thing in, uh, the state of the world we live in. You don't see a lot of nice anymore. So thank you very much. Take care. And as always, don't let your